Okay, Steve, welcome back. Before we begin to uh, quote our passage of scripture, it's good to have you back uh, after uh, uh, several weeks now with, uh, due to your business and uh, wow. good to have you back and had a great uh, 26 weeks with Al Rosenblum, that's over now. And uh, we're good, glad to have you back. So what do we say? The word of God is what? Live and powerful and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow and is a critic of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Okay, and all, all scripture is God breathed. And what? It's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So we're going to study our self to, self to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman what? That needeth not to be ashamed, rightly, rightly dividing the, the word of truth. truth. And we always say, if the spiritual spin stops stop right, right here, because we, we really care for you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and pray for us, Steve. Give us about 15 seconds to rebound and uh, go ahead and pray for us and we'll get into our Bible study tonight. Father, we come to you tonight asking your blessings on what is taught here tonight. We thank you, Father, for the freedom to study your rightly divided word. So we pray that what is said here tonight will increase that doctrine resident in our soul to go out and be better equipped in the spiritual battle called the angelic conflict. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before we start our Bible study, I want to welcome um, Roger and Mary Joy Lamuco back. They went, they, they're in Davos City, but they're, they've been without their internet for about eight days or so. Oh, and so uh, Roger sent me a text message and said, we got it back again and they are online tonight yes. and I praise God for it, okay? <laughs> now let's do this, Steve. Our passage of scripture tonight is uh, really not just a passage, but the concept yep. is the concept of the pivot. And uh, I, I'm gonna do this tonight because uh, this past Sunday at lunch, uh, Danny Plummer, a friend, asked me a question uh, about the pivot, and I thought, you know, it, I talk about the pivot, the pivot here, the pivot there, the pivot there, and uh, it's been a long time since I taught it, just teach about it and make comments about it, but I thought, you know, this is a good time, uh, this close to the election, this is a good time then to take up this idea of the pivot, because the question is, are you in it or are you not? So let me turn to our document and um, uh, bring that up on the screen. And there's a, there are several concepts that we want to talk tonight about the pivot, but we're going to start out by the with a definition. And I want you to I want you to just sort of follow my lead, and uh, I'll share with you. I want you to do a certain thing. You go ahead and do it just like we did in the past. But there are cer certain things as we go along. I want to make some comments about that be very very helpful. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is we're talking about the concept of the pivot. This is not the doctrine of the pivot. This is just uh, information from that doctrine that will help us in, in an hour and 15 minutes time to get a good understanding of what the pivot is. So let's start with a definition, uh, number one and two bullet points, Steve. A pivot is defined as the accumulation of spiritually mature believers that, number one, are living in a client nation mm -hmm. or living under civil government in a specific geographical Location. Okay, now I want you to just look ahead, look ahead here uh, because, uh, and look at that and we'll be just doing fine. Now look here. Here's what that says. The pivot is an accumulation of spiritually mature believers. Understand this. We're talking about the pivot. We're talking about spiritually mature believers. We're not talking about people who are carnal. We're not talking about necessarily babes in Christ. It could be. We're going to talk about that. But a client nation is an accumulation at any given point in time in a client nation of spiritually mature believers. So the question is, where are you in your spiritual uh, advance? These are for spiritual mature believers living in a client nation. So it's just not a matter of, a, it's not a matter of say, Roger Lamuco and his family in, in Dallas City being a mature believer, they may be, but they are not in a client nation at this point in time. And we're looking at people who are spiritually mature in a client nation, which at this point in time, one and one only, it is the United States of America. And we're gonna explain that as we go along. Living in a client nation, or there's a second option, and that is living under a civil government in a specific geographic location. Now, that statement right there is probably gonna be brand new to a lot of people. And I'll tell you why. They hear me talking about a client nation, United States being a client nation, but I don't know that we've ever talked about living under civil government. This is a second option. 
living under a civil government in a specific geographic location. But in that geographic location, it is an accumulation of spiritually mature believers in that area. Okay, so in the client nation and a civil government in a specific geographic location, that second bullet point is going to be explained in just a little while. Secondly, we're defining a pivot. Go ahead. While a pivot is composed primarily of spiritually mature believers under spiritual self-esteem, spiritual autonomy to reach spiritual maturity, it also includes those positive believers whose momentum is carrying them towards spiritual adulthood. So you see, it's not just, just, just not a born again believer, but if a person is a babe in Christ, an adolescent, and they've come to understand, and this is where the difficulty is, because if you're not being taught operation recovery, you don't know how to get in the sphere of the spirit, which is that green circle, which is exactly where the entirety of the Christian way of life is carried out. So if you, if you don't know how to get in there, then you can't be, as a, as a babe in Christ or an adolescent, you can't be on advancing with momentum towards spiritual adulthood. But no matter where you are after salvation, when you learn how to get in that sphere of the spirit, and there's another criteria that's coming up here in just a moment. But understand, here you go. It's the, it's the spiritually mature believer. It's those that are positive toward, uh, positive toward doctrine and have momentum carrying them towards spiritual adulthood. That means you are in the process of advancing. Now, there's a third, a third option here that's going to embrace the whole thing. What is this point number three? Technically, the pivot includes all believers who have fulfilled the principle of virtue as their first priority in the plan of God. Now, that see, now here again, I, I was uh, this past this past Sunday, uh, I was uh, well, no, on Monday night. We were talking about the necessity of a pastor to explain the word of God. And when we were teaching what we were teaching on, on, on Monday night, there were those who said, I have read these notes, but I did not understand what they meant until after they were explained. And now it makes perfect sense. This statement right here, I'll guarantee it. 99% of the people who read that say, oh, I, I see what that says. I said, explain it. Mm -hmm. They can't do it or they will struggle to do it. So technically, along with point one and point two, describing who is in this pivot, you know who is in that pivot when it includes all believers, that is you, me, I, we, they, who have fulfilled the principle of virtue. Here's the problem. You use the word virtue, they say, ah, what is he talking about? Oh, I know that must mean this. No, we're going to talk about what virtue is. And when you know that you have an understanding of what virtue is, and virtue is your first priority in the plan of God, you know that you are going to be a part of that pivot. So technically, the pivot includes all believers who have fulfilled the principle of virtue. In other words, you do you, you know, okay, so you understand what virtue is are you fulfilling that principle of virtue as your first priority now what happens is we may love to go to bible class we may teach we may love to teach a bible study we may love to sing in the choir we may learn to give lo love to give we may love to drive the bus we may do you see all of that but the truth of the matter is even though you love it are you doing it see that's the idea so technically the pivot includes all believers who have fulfilled the principle of virtue. So I have to ask, going down the list, are you fulfilling the principle of virtue as your first priority? That means and nothing else is in front of this. This is, this is your goal. This is what you're doing. Now, what we need to know then is, what is this thing called virtue? So let's relate the word virtue. Let's relate it to the pivot. And when we understand what, what the, uh, virtue is related to the pivot, you'll have an idea as to whether or not you are in this pivot or not, even though you may not be in spiritual maturity. So point, uh, point number one there. Pivot virtue is the sum total of those characteristics manufactured by residence and function in the sphere of the spirit. Okay, hold it right there. You see, I've called that, uh, we're talking about virtue but I want to relate virtue to the pivot. Mm -hmm. So I call it pivot, pivot virtue. virtue, okay? <laughs> this is virtue in the pivot. Mm -hmm. What is it? It's the sum total. It's not 99%. It's not 70%. It's not 51%, which is greater than half. It is 100% or nothing. 
because then is the first priority, see? So uh, pivot virtue is the sum total of those characteristics that are manufactured by residents and function in the sphere of the spirit. Now, what happens, you may have some of these in the sphere of carnality, but that is not virtue, okay? So pivot virtue is the sum total. It is everything, all those characteristics that are, and these are gonna be characteristics of the life of Christ, that's what we're doing, characteristics that are manufactured by residents inside and function inside the sphere of the spirit. Now, I'm going to name six of these, okay? So the question is, do you have these and if you have these, you can pretty well believe that you are a part of that pivot, no matter where you are, as long as you're as long as you're advancing in the Christian way of life. And we're going to see what is the significance of this pivot. Why, why are you talking about it? Well, here they are. Here are six characteristics that are manufactured by living inside the sphere of the spirit. Now, you understand, if you don't know how to get there, you aren't in there. OK, mm -hmm. so what are these just one at a time? Genuine humility. Genuine humility. Good. Okay. Very good. Love. Love. Worship. Worship. Morality. Morality. Courage. Courage. And confidence. Now, isn't that amazing? Genuine humility. This is not fake. Mm -hmm. We need to understand that humility is submission to authority. That's what it is. So you're either 99%, 100%, 30%, 40%, 10%, no percent. As a, as a believer who's living inside the pivot, you are 100% genuinely humil uh, genuine humility. That means you're totally submitted to the authority of God. So that if you know this is what God is saying, if you know this is what he says to do or not do, and you're not doing and doing what he says, you, you are submitting to authority. Hang on though. But in an amazing, see, you, you can do that but if you, for example, if you're not submit, if I'm working for you and you're the CEO and I'm not submitting to you, I'm not, I'm not uh, uh, yielding to your authority. Guess what? I'm not yielding to God. I'm not, see, I'm not under God's authority. So if we're going to submit to God's authority, we, the only way we do that is know what the word of God says. What does he want you to do? What does he not want you to do? And you don't do and do whatever that is. You follow that? So genuine humility, that, there's nothing fake about that. That means you are genuinely humble. And humble doesn't mean laying down and letting somebody run all over you. This is, means submission to authority, and the highest authority is God. So next one is, is what? Love. Love. That's agape love. That means loving the human race. Okay? Point, uh, next one. Worship. Worship. See, uh, how do you worship God? By doing what he says to do. It's not just raising your hands and shouting and all that kind of stuff. No, worship is doing what God wants you to do. As you're living your Christian life, way of life, you are worshiping, driving down the street, you're sitting in the choir, whatever, see? How about the next one? Morality. Now, morality doesn't, ha doesn't deal with sin. The word morality means living according to the laws of divine establishment. Freedom, marriage, family, patriotism, so, um, uh, free market capitalism, and employment. Those are the laws of divine establishment. Morality is doing those things. If you're not doing those, you're immoral. Otherwise, if you're if you're following the lascivious lifestyle, you're sinning. That's sin. Okay, sin and morality are not the same thing. Okay, courage. Yep, courage. <laughs> we need. <laughs> yeah, we, we need. need courage, do we right? not? Do we need Woo! that today? Big time. Do we need it today? Absolutely. We need courage today. We need to be willing to stand in light of all that's going on. Now, when we do this, we don't want to be jamming people, something down people's throat. We need to be, we need to be willing to, to objectively teach the truth whenever we have the opportunity. And that truth alone not, it doesn't have anything to do with how you say it. It's the truth that will cut, cut through whatever, whatever we're talking to, okay? And the next one is what? Confidence. Do we really believe that God's in control? Do we believe that God really has our back when the fifth cycle of discipline occurs? Many people don't do that. I know many people right now that are praying, oh God, just get me out of here. That's a, that, that's a panty waste, you know? That's not being what God wants us to do. He'll take us out when he's ready. But in the meantime, we need to be, uh, we need to be courageous and confident in all that's going on. So pivot virtue, 
So here it is. So among all those things up, up above there and at point one, uh, one and two, we've defined it and said who is in this pivot. But technically, if you're in there, you're going to manifest these things. You're going to have this. You're going to have uh, the, the characteristics of pivot virtue. OK, now, point number point number two, since virtue is the possession of God, virtue is restricted to life inside the sphere of the spirit. Pivot virtue cannot be duplicated or reproduced in the cosmic system. And we're going to talk about what the cosmic system is, mm -hmm. but you can't reproduce. You cannot reproduce. So if I had the gray circle, carnality, if I had the gray circle, carnality, and the green circle over here as the sphere of the spirit, the sphere of the flesh and the sphere of the spirit, you cannot produce pivot virtue inside that, uh, that sphere, of the, sphere of the flesh. You have to be inside the sphere of the spirit. Remember, the thing that makes this real is because we're related to the angelic conflict. Now, we said here, you read, pivot virtue cannot be duplicated or reproduced in the cosmic system. So, question, what is the cosmic system? Well, the cosmic system is Satan's strategy as the ruler of this world to control believers. See, he has a strategy whereby he can control and actually, I, I don't like that word control. control. I should I should put the word influence. influence. Okay, that's forget that, folks. Change that word in your notes. Not control. He influences us. You have a choice. Okay, the cosmic system is Satan's strategy, and he has a strategy to keep us out of the sphere of the spirit. A lot of uh, many different mm -hmm. ways. Okay, so second bullet point: the cosmic system is also Satan's policy for the rulership of this world. See what's he. What kind of a policy does he have to rule this world? Well, he's got a policy and he's got a strategy. And what he, what we don't want to do is we don't need to, to fall under that strategy. We don't need to be following his policies. We need to be following God's policies. And that's why, again, we're either, we are either in or we're out. Now, the cosmic system, what about the cosmic system? Well, the cosmic, cosmic system is your enemy. See, it's the enemy, the born-again Christian. Mm -hmm. So if we're out, by the way, if we're out here, isn't it amazing that we indicated that what Satan wants us to do, we've said time and time again in the past, Satan does not want you to sin. How many times have we heard someone say, well, the devil made me do it. The devil <laughs> made me. No, the devil didn't make you do anything. It was your choice. Right. Satan is not interested in you sinning. Say, what? I've never heard anything like that before. Listen to me. Satan doesn't want you to sin. Satan wants to do good. He wants you to do good. See, apart and you're God. apart from God. That's exactly right. Do good apart from God. So the issue is this. That's part of his strategy. Just do good. Everything's going to be cool. You think you're okay. You just can't figure out why all this pressure in your life. Well, the cosmic system, his system, his strategy, his policy is our enemy. We need to know what that is. We can't know that without the word of God. Next bullet point. The cosmic system is manifested by life inside the sphere of the flesh. So you can you can you uh, can you can you manifest the cosmic system in the sphere of the spirit? No, no, no you can't. Not. And see, the, the only way, the only place you can do that is in the is in the sphere of the flesh, right. and you are following his strategy, his policy. Mm -hmm. You are away from God, and you're not a part of the pivot period. You allow so, him to influence you. That's right. That's exactly right. Now, let's move on to point three. Therefore, virtue is the distinctive char characteristic of the royal family, the inevitable result, doing the right thing in the right way. See, in other words, virtue is not a characteristic of Satan's policy. It's not a part of his plan, his strategy. Virtue is a part of God's plan, a part of the protocol plan. It's a characteristic of the royal family mm -hmm. of God. Now, what that means is we may have many royal family members that don't have that virtue, but if you're going to see virtue, you won't find it out there in the sphere of the flesh. Mm -hmm. You're only going to find it in the sphere of the spirit, okay? And inevitably, that simply means you're doing the right thing in the right way in the sphere of the spirit. Okay, point number four. Again, basic virtues developed in the sphere of the spirit include enforced and genuine humility, love, worship, morality, Courage and confidence. See, that's why I said again, we talked about those earlier, but there's one thing we added here that we didn't have mm -hmm. up above there. There are two kinds of humility. One is enforced, 
and the other one is genuine. Now, how do we end up with? Do you do you remember what? How do you how do you end up with enforced humility? You know what that is? No. Okay, that's good because I haven't talked about that for a long time, Steve. Genuine humility is when you see what God says and you decide to do that in the spirit of the flesh. That's genuine humility. In other words, you of your own choice did this. And forced humility is when you're doing the wrong thing and God says, uh-huh, bang, pressure, <laughs> bang, <laughs> pressure, <laughs> bang, <laughs> pressure. After a while, you say, I don't want to do that anymore. That's enforced humility. See, that humility came by God enforcing it through the, through the, uh, the pressure the divine discipline in your life to catch your attention that you're doing the wrong thing in the wrong doing the wrong thing and he wants you over here in the spirit of the spirit doing the right thing in the right way and how did you learn to do it it's because he kept banging on you banging on you banging on you banging on you and that the banging is that's not getters. punishment that these are the attention getters that's enforced humility so a virtue of a virtue of uh of um uh, a basic virtue is enforced humility. It's one of those two humilities, okay? Point number five. Humility is defined as submission to legitimate authority. Mm -hmm. First of all, God's authority. Humility is the foundation for all virtue. See, you'll never be, you'll never have this virtue. You will never have these characteristics that God wants you to have until you learn humility. That means submission to his authority. How do you submit? You see what he says and you do it. He says, don't do this. You don't. You, he said, do it. You do it. That is genuine humility. So humility is defined as submission to what kind of authority? Legitimate. See, the government today has authority. But many times the government is wrong. We're not. The, the, if the government is violating our un, uh, unalienable rights, if the if the government is violating that, if a government has the rule, a rule that violates our freedoms, we say we aren't doing it. Now, when that happens, Steve, you'd better have some courage mm -hmm. because the government's coming after you. OK, you may lose your house, you may lose your life. Who knows what's going to happen? But the truth of the matter is, is this is why we need to understand the humility. This is the angelic conflict. And again, what we're talking about. Are you in the pivot or not? And if you think you are in that pivot, then there are certain criteria that you need to be manifesting in your life. And if you're not, then you're not in the pivot. And guess what? You are a part of the problem because the omniscience of God is looking down. And while I, I've said it sounds like a broken record, sounds mm -hmm. like a broken record, sounds like a broken record, I can't help it because my freedom, your freedom, our freedom to evangelize, worship as we desire, send out missionaries, be a friend of Israel, all of this is at stake in 27 days. Got it? Now, with that in mind, let's move on to um, uh, point number four. Believers in the pivot stand out in contrast to believers living in reversionism. So we're talking about the pivot and we're defining, we're de describing the pivot at this point in time. So again, if, you are, if you're in the pivot, you, if you are in the pivot, pivot, that means you have certain manifestations in your life mm -hmm. that indicate right. you are a part of the pivot. Now, when you take your life then as a in the pivot and you compare that mm -hmm. against a reversionist, there is a contrast that is absolutely clear about which one is which, okay? Mm -hmm. So let's talk about reversionistic believers for just a moment. How in the world do you recognize this guy over here on the left that's reversionist in contrast to you over here living as a as a person who is uh, is virtuous and uh, in that sense, okay? Well, re reversionistic believers are recognized by their apostasy, their self-righteousness, their distortion of doctrine, and their disorientation to reality. Now, if you would stop, if Whoa. you would stop and look at that and ask yourself, what is going on today? Uh, I've got a, I've got a statement that's made by Kamala Harris here in just a few minutes. It's absolutely unbelievable. Hmm. And this is why I was listening to radio today and someone said, I can't believe, I can't believe that anyone would, would be positive toward this kind of living or this kind of option as to where we are headed 
in this country if we don't do the right thing on election then in election day okay and here again it's not about it's not this is not just political it is for our freedom to to resolve the spiritual battle called the angelic conflict I rather imagine if uh, if all things go if they all things go upside down uh, on the on the twenty on the on the third of uh, November, uh, one day down down the road, I'll uh, hear this knock on the door and said, uh, "Excuse me, I understand that there's a worship going on inside this building every Monday night, and I understand there's something in your backyard that is called uh, the it's called the, the your studio, the shack in the back out of which you're teaching supposedly the Word of God." This is no longer permissible from this residence. And I say, what? Wait a minute, just a second. See, this is not political. This is about resolving the angelic conflict. It's about doing the will of God without regard to who you are. This is what God wants from us, okay? So read those, read those uh, four options again. Their apostasy. What, and what is apostasy? They're uh, straying away from the truth. Straight away from the truth. You had the truth. Yeah. You I had mean, the truth of God consciousness. God showed you by all these things that are uh, are real out here. Say, oh my, there's a God out there. You have truth, brother. Now, if you say when the gospel comes along and they present the gospel and you say, I don't want that. I don't believe that. See, you have strayed from the word of God. And the same thing happens when you become a born again mm -hmm. believer. You got the gospel. Now you turn around, you go another direction, go back to your old lifestyle again. This is apostasy. You have the truth and you're going away. Now something else is what? What's the next one? Their self righteousness. Their self righteousness. This is not. This is not uh, experiential. This is not positional. This is your own righteousness. And this is why the scripture indicates all of your good. It, it, it's it's no good. All of your good is uh, it's uh, it's filthy rags. filthy rags. That's right. It's filthy rags righteousness. It's human good. It's going to burn at the bema seat. It'll get you hell in the lake of fire at the at the great white throne judgment. What's the next one? Their distortion of doctrine. Do you think there's if there's any possibility oh, of distortion of doctrine oh, today? They, they misinterpret. They misquote it. They do everything. It, it's it's rampant, Steve. Mm -hmm. But however, if we don't know the word of God, we would know would not know that it's distorted. Right. See, how about what's the next one? They're disoriented to reality. <laughs> yeah, what is hap This is not reality. See, okay. Now, what's the next point? You can recognize a shrinking of the pivot by the social action and the social civil disobedience that's advocated and practiced by many Christians. Let me give you a good example of this. Okay. We know that we we talk about abortion being wrong. We know that we know that abortion isn't murder. You're not when you when you abort a baby, you're not killing anything. You're you're uh, you're, you're killing life, but it's not human life. Okay, we call that biological life. It is not human life until God breathes into the nostrils of that baby, breathes breathes uh, life into that baby at the moment of uh, physical birth. But we're still, I'm still opposed to abortion because now what we're going to do, we're going to abort the baby either after birth or before birth, tear it apart and sell the body parts. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, what in the world is this? What the, is this what life is all about? I don't think so. So what happens now? We don't like that, Steve. So I said, okay, next Sunday afternoon, right after Bible class, we're going to have lunch together and we're going to go downtown and we're going to stand in front of this abortion clinic and we're not going to let anybody, that's social action. Okay. Now, when you go out and you start throwing bricks through the windows and stuff like that, that is civil disobedience. But notice what I did, the word Christian there. What did I do with it? See that baggage yeah, right there? Yeah. What did I do? I tell us. Uh, no, no, I, mean, I, mean, uh, I put quotes uh, around quote, it. Quote, quote, yeah. yeah, I put quotes around yeah. it, indicating that you claim to be a Christian. Maybe you are and maybe you're not. But you claim to be a Christian, and here you are out there with all this social action. You're wanting the government to give you everything. You want a new phone. You want new health care. You want to pay. You want somebody to pay for your college education. Excuse me. You go out and you shut down the you shut down the beer joint. Okay, I don't know we're going to do that anymore. So civil disobedience and social action. These are an indication of a shrinking pivot. Okay, so you're a born again Christian, and somehow or another, as a liberal, as liberal born again Christian, you're out there doing all this stuff. That is an indication that you are not in the pivot. You have gone outside of the pivot. Okay, point number five. The true Christian influence, that's pivot influence, is the national entity 
in the national entity is spiritual in nature, but not fleshly. Okay, now take a look at that again. See the the true Christian influence. See up there, we got we got uh, uh, quotes around the word right. Christian up there. But the true Christian influence, and what is the true Christian influence? It's pivot influence. It's the influence that you have living inside the sphere of the uh, the sphere of the spirit, living inside that pivot. And the only reason you're there is because you have true virtue. Okay. So the true Christian influence in a national entity, the United States of America, it's spiritual in nature. It is not fleshly, okay? Now, how about the, the, the couple of bullet points here? The believer's civil responsibility is, divine, is defined under the laws of divine establishments, as in Romans 13, 1 through 10. Okay, so if we read 13, or Romans 13, 1 through 10, and we've done that. Listen, uh, uh, Pastor, uh, Pastor Mike Smith, in, uh, in Brenham, Texas, Country Bible Church, he and I spent almost uh, somewhere between one and two years every, every week for about an hour and 15 minutes talking about his book that dealt with Romans 10 or Romans 13. Now, Romans 13 in verses one through 10, it's going to tell you how you and your, your Christian life is going to relate to civil government. And interestingly enough, when you understand, even if you don't read the J.B. Phillips translation, which is the only translation that I know that actually says it, where you can read it and say, oh, that's very clear. Mm -hmm. But if you read the King James Version, the NAS, the RSV, et cetera, reading these other versions of the Bible, it says that, but you have to read into it in order to get this idea. But here's what it says. In Romans 13, I believe it's in verse 1. It tells us that the only government that we have to be uh, be responsible to is legitimate government. It's a legitimate law. And so what happens now, we're being told, for example, the Supreme Court is the final authority in what constitutes um, constitutes real law, okay? Not so. The, const the, the Supreme Court is not the final authority. We're going to see that in just a little while, okay? What is the final authority in this country? Now, let's move on then. Uh, point number five, read point number five again. The true Christian influence, this pivot influence, is the, in the nation, national entity is spiritual in nature, not fleshly in okay, nature. Okay, so it's got to be Pivot. spiritual in nature, okay? Now, in point number two, we're gonna see the, a, a pivot principle. And what is it that we're gonna compare? The pivot and the spinoff. Okay, get that term. The pivot and the spinoff. Now, when you see, this is point number two. This is an entirely different thought. So in point one, two pages worth, we have defined and described the pivot. Who's in it? How do you get in it? So with that in mind, everybody that's with us, if they've been listening, should understand, based on that definition and description, I am either in the pivot or I am not, okay? Now, what we're seeing here in point number two then is if you are in the pivot, you are there. If you're not in the pivot, guess where you are? You're in what we're going to call the spinoff. Now, here's what happens. If you see a hurricane and that hurricane's going around the circle, question, in that, in that hurricane phenomena, where, where is the calm? In the pivot, in the center, right? In, in the, the center. center, okay? Mm -hmm. See, that's the pivot, okay? Now, what happens is, guess what? If you're outside of the pivot, what are you going? what's going to happen? You're in the spin out. You're going to get off, spin turmoil. off. Turmoil. See, in other words, if, if you happen to be a piece of a piece of paper flying there, if you're in the if you're in the in the center of that hurricane, you drop it, it's just going to flow down. But when you if you're if it's outside the outside the, the center, mm -hmm. it's going to throw it out there. See, so this is why we call call this the spinoff. So when when believers are not in the in the pivot, they are going to be spun off. In other words, indicating, get it out of here. You're not a part of, the, of what God's doing here. Saved, yes, but you're not a part of what God's doing. Now, let's see. Uh, let's begin to see some uh, some points here. Point number one, consider the pivot in a Gentile client nation. Now, let me point this out. Uh, it, the, uh, the, the pivot in a Gentile client nation. Prior to the time that Israel was destroyed as a client nation in 70 AD, 
it had had two previous situations where God drove them out of the land. The third time was in 70 AD. Now what happened then, there, has, there was never a client nation prior to 70 AD. But when, when, uh, when Israel was uh, cast out of the land and destroyed in 70 AD, there was a client nation, a Gentile client, uh, a Gentile nation that God, God deemed then as being the, uh, the, the, the client nation, which was a Gentile client nation. It was SPQR. In other words, it's, it was the Roman Empire at that point in time. And they were, the, they were the, the client nation, Gentile client nation, for a period of time. Guess what? They did the same thing Israel did. Then there was another one. It did the same thing. Here's another one. Did the same thing. All of them, they, they start off right, and then they go wrong. They go haywire, okay? So now we're talking here about consider the pivot in a Gentile client nation. So there were somewhere around 13 of them historically, and right down to the time of the United States of America. So what we're going to do is we're going to consider the pivot in a client nation, which also would be the same for the United States of America at this point in time. So let's consider that. First of all, a small pivot and an enlarged pivot. What about a small pivot? Well, a small pivot means a spiritually declining Gentile client nation. So if, if and see, we don't, the interesting thing here is we don't know exactly what constitutes mm -hmm. the pivot. In other words, does God say, okay, it's going to be 80% of the, mm -hmm. the born-again mm -hmm. believers. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be 30% or is it going to be 10 out of 100, 10 out of 15,000, okay? We don't know. But what happens is God knows whether the, he knows the parameters of the pivot, the size of the pivot mm -hmm. that says, we're going to go on with you. Mm -hmm. He knows the size of the pivot when he says, okay, this is it. Bingo, you're out of here. Okay. Now, the question mm -hmm. then is, the small, the small pivot means spiritually declining Gentile nation. But what about an enlarged pivot? means a wonderful, prosperous, and blessed client nation. So when you take a look at what's going on today, mm -hmm. you and I might say, well, I could see, you know, in terms of all the people that claim to be Christian in the United States, oh, we got a mediocre kind of a pivot. Or, hey, it's a really large pivot. Or, hey, it, man, it's so small, I, I don't mm -hmm. think I can count them, mm -hmm. okay? So we know that God knows, but we don't. But we know this, that if there is a small pivot and it's declining, God is going to get your attention. First cycle of discipline, second cycle of discipline, third cycle of discipline, fourth cycle of discipline, and fifth cycle, you are out of here. Mm -hmm. So what that means is you and I you and I actually taught this, Leviticus 26, the five cycles, and what did we find? Each time you went from one cycle of discipline to the next, how many times did it raise? Seven times. Seven times greater. Seven times greater. When you went from one to two, seven times greater from two to three, and so on right up to the time you get to the fifth cycle of discipline. So we could say uh, the way things go in America, especially the election coming up, will be an indication of whether the pivot's getting smaller decline or whether it's hanging on enough for uh, prosperity. That's right. So what we could say at this point in time, we know it's declining. Yes. We don't yes. know where it because is, we but we know it is. Getters, yes. That's yeah. exactly right. And by the way, in an amazing there is a hurricane coming up through the Gulf right now that's headed right for New Orleans. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, there was, uh, what was it, 16,000? There was a, a humongous number of people that were out of electri electricity mm -hmm. in the Yucatan Peninsula, Peninsula, mm -hmm. in, Peninsula in Mexico from this same hurricane when it went through there. Mm -hmm. it, it was devastating, okay? In the midst of the fires and all uh, the other things. Absolutely, right? Steve. These are attention symptoms, getters. Symptoms, uh -huh. Boy. Okay, so mm -hmm. if, if it's small, the, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the pivot is shrinking. Declining. If it's enlarged, you're going to have blessings, prosperity, etc. Okay, now point number two. The pivot is a remnant of believers, as defined in number one above, who live in a client nation. And so what we do is going to, we're not going to go back and read that, but if you forget what we set up in point number one, we gave three different areas up there as to what, what the definition of a, a pivot is. So you should know by the pivot, or you, should, you should know by the definition whether or not you're even close to being in the pivot. You may be a little doubtful, but you know, you say, well, you know, it seems like I'm going in the right direction. Well, take a look at the definition and ask yourself then, do I fit that definition or do I not? Say, well, it's 80%. I'm, I, is that good enough? No. No, it's not good enough. 
there's something wrong in your life and you're not in the you're not there this is where this is where we come to understand what this what this virtue is about us that characterizes us that would tell us and i say us i'm i'm editorializing mm -hmm. whether or not you i we are in that pivot or not and it has everything listen we are down to 27 days mm. to before we find out whether or not in fact god is going to allow us to go on or whether we are out of here mm. now out of here won't happen that day no but i will tell you on the 20th of january mm. katie bar the door mm. And we're going to see some things about that. Okay, point number three, Steve. On the other hand, the spinoff from the pivot is made up of believers who have entered reversionism and are living in Satan's cosmic system. So the remnant are people who are advancing. Mm -hmm. The spinoff are people who have gone into reversionism and living in Satan's um, system, Satan system, in the cosmic system, which is, means you're living in the devil's world. You're functioning under the sphere of the, in the sphere of the flesh. You're, you've got human viewpoint. You're functioning on evil mm -hmm. principles. You're following his policy, his strategy, whether you know it or not. Now, what about negative volition? Well, negative volition towards doctrine and resultant reversionism produces the spinoff. Okay, so take a look at that again. What produces the spinoff? Negative volition towards doctrine. And what does and, it result and in? It results in reversionism. Absolutely. And it produces the spinoff. The spinoff. Mm -hmm. That means, whoop, you're out of here, mm -hmm. okay? Now, when what happens when the pivot is too small? Well, when the pivot is too small in any generation, there are great disasters. Stop right there. <laughs> we just talked Excuse about me. It. That's right. When the pivot is too small in any generation, how about this generation, the mm. generation in which we live? Now, ask yourself, what's going on? What's going on in uh, uh, in the, in California, in in uh, Oregon, in Washington? What's happening in Florida? What's happening now in in uh, New Orleans and, the and along the South? And the what virus. about yeah? What about the virus all across it? Do you think that God doesn't? God, just a second. Do you see what's going on down here? He, he, he said, "Do I see it?" He said, "I allowed it to happen." <laughs> Look at your lifestyle. Look at your. He said, "All I'm doing is," he said, "I'm trying to get your attention, folks." So again, when the when how about this? Point number four. When the pivot is too small in any generation, there are great disasters. Okay. Some are economic disasters, some are military disasters, and some are policy disasters. Okay, now stop there. Some are economic disasters. Mm. The, what we're talking about here is an economic recession, okay? And by the way, the, the, previous, the previous administration in the United States are lying through their teeth about the economy in the United States of America. During the last eight during the, the last eight years prior to 2016, the economic policy in this country was so bad that we, we were just stagnated economically. But in 2016, we had someone come into this country who understood economics. And the next thing you know, you have the greatest economy ever in the United States of America since 1776. Do you hear what I'm saying? That's free market capitalism at work. China was eating our lunch prior to that time. And as a result of that, in the competition for world domination economically, we found out that our government was actually, it was actually giving in to China as far as the economy was concerned, and here we are, we have a stagnated, uh, we have a stagnated economy. When the present administration came in, going back to free market capitalistic principles, guess what? We absolutely took off, and it was absolutely amazing what took place. Now, economic disaster, that's an indication that you've got a problem with the pivot, okay? The, in other words, the people, the people who are born again Christians have the wrong economic policy. They want give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Okay. Now uh, let's see. Moving, moving on from there. Policy uh, disaster. Th yeah. Then, then, we, yeah. Then we have a, a military disaster. Yeah, okay. Military. We had well, listen in 2016. Our military was almost depleted. Depleted. In other words, if we if we had to go to war, we did we were we were functioning, Steve, with uh, with 
airplanes that were built years and years and years. You couldn't get parts for them. Do you hear that? We couldn't get parts for them. They were going to the they were going to the scrapyard, uh, the the plane uh, airplane scrapyard. They were getting parts from that to rebuild the planes that we had. They're going to fight in a war. Excuse me. But the military in the last four years has been built up immensely. And also, I thought the other day, Dr. Jim, have you noticed lately in the news in the last X number of months, there's hardly been anything about wars and battles and things over there? Absolutely. Now, look, and look here. Mm -hmm. And hit the next one. Policy disaster. Mm -hmm. uh, excuse me. How about this policy? Um, the, uh, it, it, you can't, church over there, you cannot worship on Sunday anymore. You can't sing, you can't sing outside in a parking lot. That you, that ha see, mm -hmm. that happens, Steve. Mm -hmm. These are policy disasters, one right after another. A policy, is it really a policy where, where we had a, uh, a, an agreement with Iran, an agreement with China under other, other, other administrations? Guess what? Those policies were killing us. Policies where uh, where the economic disaster where we say why why is there so much poverty in a country if you can't get a job you say why can't you get a job well there are no jobs there why where's the business they've gone out of town they're overseas why because of government regulation okay so again next bullet point when the spinoff uh, because of economic involvement becomes too great that generation is destroyed. Stop and look at that. Mm -hmm. The spinoff because of cosmic involvement. Yeah. There you go. You're following Satan's strategy, Politics. his yeah. policy. You're functioning in the sphere of the flesh. You've got all this human viewpoint. You're out there with your motivation to do your own thing, self-righteousness, and you can't figure out, whoa, wait a minute, just a second here. Generation destroyed, okay? Now, if there is no response to the four cycles of discipline, which is mentioned in Leviticus 26, God eventually removes that client nation from history, the fifth cycle of discipline. Every, every client nation yes, after Israel has been destroyed under the fifth cycle of discipline, and we are just this yeah, close to having happened in the United yeah. States of America. Again, this is not just a political thing. This is about the angelic conflict, you as a born again Christian, and whether or not you're going to be a part of the pivot or you're going to be a part of the problem. Period. Now, what about, okay, so let's assume for just a moment, fifth cycle of discipline comes. In, in November, on November 3rd, hey, yes, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm praying that my birthday present will come on november the third my birthday is on november the second mm -hmm. so on november the second i have a birthday and i want a belated birthday birthday present on november third okay and uh i know what that is <laughs> yeah okay that's exactly right so when divine judgment falls on a client nation what about the pivot well when you god that pivot's going to be secure regardless that's right you will be secure if you are in that pivot if you are not in that pivot kiss yourself goodbye mm. you will go you will go in one way or another you'll either die with that pivot or die with that with that uh, destruction mm. you will be enslaved under a new under a new uh, regime if that's the case take your choice but if you're going to if you're going to be in the pivot, you had better be willing to stand. You be, had better better be willing to have courage in the in the light of all that's going on. And when you tuck your tail and run, you keep your mouth shut. Guess what? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The scripture is clear about this. This is the angelic conflict. Otherwise, it makes no sense. Now. So when the when divine discipline falls on the client nation, the pivot is secure. Well, what about the pivot? The pivot is always preserved when the divine judgment falls on a client nation, even though the period shares in the difficulties of the disaster. That's okay, the cursing by association. I no, guess. Well, here's what happens. Now, let's, so if you are part of the pivot, mm, you'll be preserved. Well, you're going to be preserved, okay? But just because you're preserved doesn't necessarily mean mm. things are going to be it's rosy. rosy. Yeah. They're not going to be rosy because you are going to share in the difficulty. You may not have food. 
You may not have gasoline to go anywhere. You may not have a pair of shoes for your feet. You may not have water to, uh, to uh, coming through your tap. You may have to walk for water. Your, med your medication, the pharmacy may be out of your medication. See, you may, we will be a part of the, uh, this uh, disaster. We're gonna share in the difficulties of that unless God just moves you out of here. And that's not, a, that's not necessarily likely, but, but, but you will be preserved, preserved. Okay. Now here's the issue. So, okay. So you are, you're, you're going to be preserved. Point number six. Well, while the pit is secure, the spinoff is always destroyed by historical catastrophe. So you will be destroyed by historical catastrophe. Mm -hmm. See, there is the fifth cycle. Oh, not, I'm uh, sorry. It's uh, the sin of the death. Mm -hmm. The fifth cycle of discipline comes and you are taken out of here under the uh, the sin of the death. I mean, let me ask you, is, that's good news, isn't it? Is that good news? <laughs> good news if you're in the pivot, bad news if you're in the spinoff. See, that's the, that's the issue. Mm -hmm. We have to understand what this is all about. Okay, now, what's the first bullet point? <laughs> This is how God administers the sin of the death to reversionists. See, it's through the historical catastrophe. So if you are in the spinoff, guess what? This is how God administers the sin of the death. What are you going to get shot? You're going to get your head cut off? You're going to get blown up by a bomb? What, what's mm -hmm. going to happen? You're going to be poisoned to death? I don't know. I guess there's such a thing as personal catastrophe because you're in this historical catastrophe and personally you're affected by it, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, that's okay. Same thing, I, really. I, 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 I can accept that. Yeah, but the idea is sure. you're not going to survive. Mm -hmm. See, that's the issue. You, you will not survive suffer. this thing. Historical disaster separates the pivot from the spinoff. See that? See, and, I mean, I, I, it just, yeah. that, that is so clear. Mm -hmm. Historical disaster is going to separate the pivot from the spinoff. So here it is. You got two groups right here in a circle. The spinoff that's not been spun off yet. You've got the reversionist and the per the people in the pivot in one big circle. Now, when the historical disaster comes, yes. guess what? That you look at that you look at that circle again. There's nobody left in it but the pivot because the spinoff is gone. Period. And I'm telling you, we are we are we are as close as the I, I don't think. In other words, on November the 3rd or November the 4th or January the 20th, it won't all happen at that point in time. But progressively and progressively, those that are not in the pivot are going to suffer and they will eventually whoop, be gone. OK. Mm. If the pivot is too small. And the spinoff too large, then the nation is destroyed. See, that's what happens. So God's looking down, and he, I see we don't know we don't know how much how how big or how small that that's uh, mm -hmm. pivot is. That's exactly what happened but, in the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. It got too small, <laughs> and they were destroyed. That's right. And there there are several biblical illustrations of this. Israel on three different occasions. So when the pivot gets too small, the spinoff is too large. The nation is destroyed. That's the client nation. Now, if the nation is destroyed, what happens? Well, the pivot is preserved through the disaster. Now, oh, someone says, "Wait a minute, look here." <laughs> I, I can you can you read can you read that bottom line? Look real, just read that bottom line there, right? The bullet point. If the nation is destroyed, the pivot is preserved through the disaster. Someone says, "Wait a minute." How do you believe that? How do you know that? What makes you believe that if the if the pivot is too small and the spinoff is too large, the nation is going to be destroyed? The pivot will be preserved. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Oh, do you need do you need do you need an answer? Do you need proof of that? Read that, Steve. Isaiah twenty eight five. And that day, the Lord of Hosts will become a beautiful crown and a glorious diadem. To the remnant of his people. Stop right there. Just a second. God, he says, uh, the Lord, the Lord of hosts will become a beautiful crown and a glorious diadem to the remnant of his people. Okay. The remnant there is the pivot in Israel at that point in time. And so the the, the spin-off is thrown out, but the but the remnant is left. And it says, in that day, when that takes place, the Lord of hosts 
will become a beautiful crown and a glorious diadem to the remnant. So here you are now, you're a part of the remnant, and you're looking at God and say, God, what a beautiful crown you are. What a glorious diadem you are. What a perfect person you are. Look what you've done. You've preserved us in all that. That's what the remnant is saying. Then it says, a spirit of justice for him who sits in judgment. A spirit of justice. Justice is coming. Spinoff is gone. The, the, the remnant is, is blessed, okay, at that point in time. They're preserved. A spirit of justice for him who sits in judgment. A strength, what that? A strength to those who repel the onslaught of the gate. You know who the, you know who the, uh, those are the, the people that are strong and repel the on, on uh, repel the onslaught of the gate. There it is. It's the remnant. the remnant. See, the remnant stands up. The remnant doesn't keep quiet. They don't cave in. That's that's exactly right. See, in the in that day, the Lord of hosts will become a beautiful crown and a glorious diadem. Why? Because the spin-off is gone and the remnant has been preserved. A beautiful crown and a glorious diadem to the remnant of his people. Yeah, like a part two, Dr. His remnant of his people. His people, that's right. Mm -hmm. A remnant of his people. So by destroying the great spinoff, what? In point uh, A. Reversionist, the Lord protects future generations of history from evil, from reversions of apostasy and tyranny. See, in other words, and this is what happened in 1776. Mm -hmm. God says, look, uh, the, the people broke away from England. England at that point of King George, they were they were they were abusing the people in the colonies. And he said, hey, boy, enough is enough here. And so the great the, by destroying the great uh, uh, spinoff of reversionists, the Lord protects future generations of history from evil. In other words, if if something happens here in this country and God protects protects you and I, why is he protecting? Here, let me let me put it this way. If in fact on November the third, mm -hmm. if everything goes right, and we have an administration that comes up to continue the grace mm -hmm. provision of God, guess what? The 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 spinoff isn't going to have anything to say about this, and what we have then is we've got the, we've got the remnant who are looking up and say, "Thank you, God! What a glorious diadem you are! What a jewel you are to us!" Okay, but what happens? He says, "When when the." when the the, uh, the state nation is destroyed. Well, the spinoff is destroyed so that the nation will have breathing room for future generations. Absolutely. See, all you got left is the-, is the Like uh, pruning the bush so it can bear more fruit. That's exactly <laughs> right, Steve, point nine. <laughs> Historical crisis and disaster are the means of cleansing a nation from the spinoff of evil believers. Stop and see that mm. one more time, please. Man, that's good. Just read that one mm. more time, Steve. Historical crisis and disaster are the means of cleansing a nation from the spinoff of those evil believers. Then read the bullet point. The great spinoff will destroy a nation unless God intervenes with historical disaster to eliminate the spinoff. See, wow. see, in other words, God doesn't, but he may not destroy the nation. Mm -hmm. But what, what he may do, he's going to get rid of it. He's going to, uh, through historical disaster, mm. he'll eliminate the spinoff. Mm. So that all that's left is the is the, uh, the, the, the pivot to, to pick up and move on, okay? Expand. So here's the issue in, in the next bullet point. Either the spinoff must go or the nation must go. That's just, a good point. Just look at November the 3rd. Mm -hmm. Either the spinoff's got to go or the nation's going to go. And the spinoff is going to go. He'll set them aside if the right thing is done on righteousness and justice kicks in. That's exactly right, Steve. Point number 10. With the infection of reversionism destroyed, the nation takes on a new life and it continues. See, that's when you that's when you take reversionism and you get it out of the way, the spinoff. Mm. Get it out of here, okay? Now mm. I'll tell you what's going to happen. If in fact on November 3rd we get the right the right idea, mm -hmm. all this stuff with Antifa. The, the Black Lives Matter that has been taken over by Antifa and other organizations mm -hmm. that, are, that are Marxist in nature. God, listen, our, this new administration coming up, if the right thing is done, that will end. I'm telling you, it will end and it won't take long to do it. When, he, when the present administration said, ISIS, we're coming after you. It didn't take them long to destroy ISIS. ISIS is no more. No more. And that same thing will happen here to all this destruction of private property, mm, yeah. business, economy, that kind of thing. There will be 
that fast. It's going to happen if we do the right thing in the right way. Now, in point number 11, if large enough, the pivot is the means of delivering a nation either from or through historical disaster. Okay. Mm. Pivot's got to be large mm. enough. Mm. Now, here's an, here's an example. Of, if large enough, if the pivot is large enough, the pivot is the means of delivering a nation, delivering the United States of America from either, uh, from either, uh, let's see, move, look to nation either from, oh, either from or through. That's it. See, it's the means of delivering a nation either through or from historical energy, uh, uh, disaster. So in other words, God may, God may get the disaster out of the way so you don't have to go through it. Or you may go through the historical disaster while he is purging the, the spinoff, okay? Now, here's an example of this, point number, uh, the bullet point. The example is uh, Judah in two, two, uh, 701 B.C. during the Sennacherib invasion. The constant ministry of, of Isaiah turned the tide in Judah. When all the establishment means of divine deliverance fail, Response to Bible teaching is the nation's last hope. So look at that again. Mm -hmm. So during the Sennacherib uh, uh, invasion, Judah is being invaded. But what happened is the consistent ministry of Isaiah, the word of God, the word of God, the word of God. We've got the prophet coming along and teaching the word of God. That turned the tide in Judah. That was the southern kingdom of Israel at that point in time. So here's the issue. When all establishment means you got the police that are trying to hold down the, the hold down the criminality, you got the you got the the military trying to keep you from being invaded from outside. So what happens then when all that fails? Guess what? The response to teaching Bible doctrine, the response to the teaching of the Word of God, is the final hope of a nation. Listen, Steve, that is why I am doing what I am doing right now. I know that there are others that are doing the same thing. Sir Darrell's doing this. I think that Margot is doing it. I know that uh, um, uh, Brad West is doing it. There are others out here that are doing this. Or Steve, is, is you're doing it. There are others that are doing this. But this is the hope that we have if all else fails. Okay? Mm. Point 12, if the pivot is large enough, not only is the client nation delivered from historical disaster, but a large pivot of spiritually mature believers means great blessing by association to the client nation and to all nations around us. Okay, now That's what we've seen in our nation's past history. So the, the, yeah, well, sure, yeah. here. See, if we have a pivot, a pivot that's large enough, that way. so what that means is you need to be in the pivot because if that pivot is large enough, not only is the client nation delivered from historical disaster, that means God will stop all that mess. He will see to it that that's not taking place. Okay? He said, but a large pivot of spiritually mature believers means great blessing. And what happens is you will be a blessing to other people in that client nation. Mature believers mean great blessing by association to the client nation and to all other nations around it. So that means that if the pivot is large enough, God saves and de delivers this nation. Not only are we not only are we going to be a blessing to everything that's left, we will be a blessing to Israel. Mm -hmm. We will be a blessing to Saudi Arabia. We will be a blessing to wh whoever out there. Okay, to Canada, to the nations around. We, the, in other words, the blessing is spilling over. Okay, now how about the need of a? Here's here's another point. This is the third point now. The need for a pivot. Why do we need one? But what we're going to do is we're going to relate this to power lust, and you better be understanding of what's going on in this country by the progressive left, okay? Which is where the power lust is coming from. It's the Nancy Pelosi's, it's the Chuck Schumer's. It's and by the way, you know that the report, the unredacted report, has now come out. I heard that. That it's it is now out. Now the question is, and it's very obvious that what Nunez and many others have been saying for almost four years, it's been exposed now. The unredacted things are out. Now the question, Steve, is 
Are we going to discipline mm -hmm. those people who were involved? And I'm telling you, the next time I am stopped, if I am ever stopped again by a, through, as a result of a rolling stop through a stop sign, the first thing I'm going to ask them is, sir, before you give me a ticket, do not give me a ticket until these people in Washington, D.C. go to jail. The just penalty for the crimes they committed. Absolutely correct. Now, let's see. Uh, the, a need for the pivot related to powerless. Number one. The demand for power always exceeds the need for power in human history. Just take a look at, at Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. What's going on, what, what our Constitution called for in Washington, D.C. were some representatives of the people from the states, okay? But now what happens is the government has grown so big, so large, people with power, seeking power, et cetera. The demand for power always exceeds the need for power in human history, point A. In any organization, there's always legitimate power and authority, but the demand for power and authority always exceeds the need. I want to get in on this. Yeah. I want to get in on this. I want to get in on this. Yeah. Suing politics. Absolutely. Suing everything else. Point B. The need for legitimate authority requires a relatively few people, but the outside, but outside of legitimate authority, arrogant people demand power and demand to be recognized. So here again, legitimate authority. It doesn't take a whole lot to run this thing, okay? Whatever it is. It doesn't take a whole lot to run this. Mm. But everybody wants to get involved. Yes. Everyone wants a piece of that, okay? Yeah. So it's like you say, you, you, you obey the Constitution, you obey the laws of the land, and everything's fine, you know? Yeah, yes. and it, yes, but what we have is the powerless. Mm -hmm. See, the old sin nature, the triple Ps, there are three sets of double Ps, mm -hmm. pr uh, pursue pleasure, prevent, prevent pain, pain, and pursue, pursue power. power. That's what I was getting to. Yes, See, that's exactly mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. And this is what's happening in Washington, D.C. It happens everywhere inside a business. Mm -hmm. People wanting power, people wanting power. Okay. An now, excess of power beyond the demand results in conflict for power. See, in other words, you and I are going to see, and now we're going to compete. Who, mm -hmm. Who's going to get the spot? Who's going to get mm -hmm. this? See, we got uh, we got uh, the Republicans uh, that are in vying for power, and the Democrats are mm -hmm. vying for power. There's a conflict here. So you're going in different directions. Okay. The so, conflict for power results in two categories of destruction in history. Watch this. Two categories of destruction in history. What is the first one? The self-destruction. Self-destruction. Go ahead. Of a nation from enemies inside the nation. Do you see now? Now, do you see mm -hmm. what's happening here? Mm -hmm. This is exactly what's happening mm -hmm. in our country today. Oh, it is. The conflict for power results in two categories of destruction for history. Do you realize that the progressive left in Washington, D.C. today, they are pro what is going on in California, Washington, and Oregon, with all, and in Minnesota, with all this burning and looting and everything else. They're mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what's happening in the state of New York. The governor and the and the uh, and the, the mayor of New York City, and the evil countries I can remember uh, decades ago being said they would they would not fire a single shot, but we would destroy within the. Well, that's yeah. exactly right. So we have the self-destruction from inside the nation and then the overt destruction, what? Of a nation from enemies outside the nation through warfare and conquest. Well, there's that'd be China, Russia, yeah. et cetera, okay? That's what the Germans, the Germans, that's what the Japanese did COVID. in the Second World War, that kind of thing. COVID. Yes. Outside, Chinese or... There you go. Yeah. Okay. The self-destruction of a nation results from a maximum number of wrong decisions from a position of weakness plus arrogance associated with the struggle for power. See, the, uh, it says, mm -hmm. for a maximum number of wrong decisions from a position of weakness. Mm -hmm. The position of weakness is okay. no doctrine. Mm -hmm. See, the word of God is alive and what? Power. Powerful. See, from a position of weakness, you have no doctrine. Function You've got too much. Man. That's man's exactly strategies. right. Yeah. So self-destruction of a nation, that's from the inside, mm -hmm. results from maximum number of wrong decisions from a position of weakness, plus the arrogance have you ever seen such arrogance oh, in Washington, D.C., right. where you were talking about Clapper, you're talking about Brenham, you're talking about Comey, talking about Strzok, you're talking mm. about, excuse me, mm. excuse me. So the yeah. overt destruction is of a nation results from the failure to see the necessity for and the proper support for both the military establishment and law enforcement. Stop right Man. there. Man. See, Man. military establishment and law enforcement. Mm -hmm. 
We know that there are bad apples in everything that goes along. There are bad apples who are pastors. There are bad apples who are this. There are bad apples for that. Bad apples in the military. Yes, we understand that. But you absolutely need law enforcement. And by the way, Kamala Harris and the progressive left want to get rid of the police departments in the cities. These are, listen, this is establishment principle from the Bible. You need law enforcement and you need a military that's strong. So law enforcement, what? Is our only protection from enemies inside our nation, from criminals. Criminals in the military, the military is our protection from enemies outside of our nation. Absolutely. Inevitably, both inside and outside destructive forces can be averted by only one thing, and that is a large pivot of spiritually mature believers. So if you want to preserve this nation from what's going on inside, inside as you have seen going on for the last three or four months with uh, the, the Black Lives mm -hmm. Matter as the radical, uh, radical group and Antifa Murder and anybody else people. that's going on, yes, that's exactly right. That's inside, the inside, but the outside forces, how about China and the Wuhan, vir uh, the Wuhan virus, et cetera, okay? It can, be aver it, can be, it can be averted by only one thing, and that is a large pivot of spiritually mature believers because this nation is preserved by spiritual measures, not over physical measures, okay? Here's a principle. As goes the believer, so goes the client nation. That's easy to see. Yes. Bullet yeah. point one. A large pivot means blessings for the United States. A small pivot means discipline and eventual destruction. What do we conclude here? We are at a crossroads now, at the point where the survival of this client nation depends on our attitude towards the protocol plan of God for each one of our lives. See, now, it's, let's come back here now, see. Mm. Uh, I, I'm going to uh, somehow or another got that screen pretty big there, and I want to, I'd like to bring this back over here. Uh, let's see if I can get it back over. I'll do it. See if I can get it over here quickly. Yeah, there it is right there. Okay, look here. So what that, now what you said here, Steve, uh, let's see, or uh, what, uh, which one of these was it? Uh, yeah, we're at the, you said we are at the crossroads now at the point of survival of our client nation, and it depends on our attitude toward the protocol plan of God for each of our lives. So I ask myself, what do I think about the protocol plan for me? What about you, Leanne? What about you, Brian? What about you, Danny and Carolyn? What about you, Janet? What about you, Kat? What about you, Miss Kim? What about you, Richard and Nita? What about uh, Rogers from out of town, he, uh, out, of, out of the country? He could pray for us, okay? pray for this nation but see for each one of us those that are online with us on facebook believers all across the country what is your attitude toward this idea of a pivot to preserve a nation well here we go no tra there are no tra oh my there are no tragedies in oh that's such a tragedy oh that's so mm -hmm. tra no there are no tragedies in history what's this mm -hmm. go ahead people and nations are the product of their own decisions Good decisions or bad decisions? Go ahead. Good decisions are defined by scripture. What is? Are, what is? Good decisions okay. as defined by scripture are faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, operation recovery if and when needed, and of course the metabolization of doctrine, and then application of the mystery doctrine for the age of grace. See, these. this is what good decisions are. They're defined in scripture. What is a good decision? I believe in Jesus Christ. What is a good decision? I'm going to use Operation mm -hmm. Recovery to get in the sphere of the spirit. Mm -hmm. What is good decision? I'm going to metabolize the word of God. I'm going to be in Bible class. I'm not only going to take it in, I'm going to make sure it's applied. And I'm going to apply the mystery doctrine. I'm not going to back to keeping the law. Now, we're about out of time. And here's what we're going to do, Steve. Mm -hmm. We're going to start in point number four. And that would be on page six. And I think we got nine pages. So to, uh, this is Wednesday. So uh, Sunday morning, I will come back and pick up right here at point number four. But what I want to see, because, uh, because I'm not sure whether I'm going to get far enough or not. But here's what I want to do. In point number four, we're going to talk about the United States of America, the starting with the 13 original colonies, mm -hmm. 
and we're going to see that the United States the 13 colonies were already a client mm -hmm. nation. Listen to me. They were already a client nation before they signed the Declaration of Independence. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason why historically that that is true. So what I want you to understand is this. Kamala Harris said, and what we're going to do is take a look at the Declaration of Independence, part of that. And that's going to show us what this country was designed to be. And Kamala Harris said today, in 27 days, she said today, in 27 days, we, the Biden-Harris administration, we have a chance of changing the course of history. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. But we know it's for the worse. So, and what we need to know is, are you in the pivot or not? Because the pivot will be preserved if the wrong thing happens on November the 3rd. But the rest of you are going to go in one way or another. You'll be persecuted, whatever. It, 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 it isn't, I'd say it this way, it ain't going to be pretty, okay? And we'll pick up right here then on mm -hmm. Sunday morning. So with your head bowed and eyes closed, pray for us, Dave. Oh, Father, this is a very exciting uh, uh, study tonight, very applicable to Thomas Wren, very enlightening, and we see it uh, played out before our eyes, Father, and we just... Do ask your blessings on this lecture in our president and heal him from this virus and get, make him be a godly example as a Christian leader for our country and our nation, the greatest nation in the world. Father, we pray for us who are functioning as the pivot, that we'll actively pursue your will for our life and encourage others to do likewise. And you will preserve this nation mm -hmm. for the future to yes. teach your word, preach the gospel, be a friend to Israel, and to send out missionaries. And that we'll have an, another chance, so to speak, yes. to move on in your plan for the for human history. Well, it's exciting times we live in, uh, no doubt. And we just pray that we will be doing our part. And I pray you bless this ministry, the Christian Way of Life Church, and Dr. Jim, who proclaims it so rightly divided each and every day. Thank you so much for preserving us and the encouragement we get from the future that you promise. In Jesus' mm -hmm. name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Steve. God bless you. Good to have you so back. So good to be back. <laughs> and uh, we'll shut everything down right now. Be back again Sunday morning.